It is Studio 41, and I have got with me an old dear friend. Actually, let's take the old off. A dear friend uh, who is a Georgia Music Hall of Fame inductee, Alan Walden. Alan, I, I just appreciate you being on this show. You know, one of the things that we do here is we talk about Georgia's music heritage, and then we talk about its future and try to promote that as well. And you are the perfect man to help tell that story. So I, I thank you for coming today. Thank you for asking me, Joey. Uh, it's a pleasure to come down here and work with you. Well, you're a good man. I I, uh, I want to talk to you. I mean, you, your knowledge of Macon's history is so extensive. Uh, what are you, What's your first memory of Macon music, and, and what was its impact on you? Well, for, for me, the uh, first person out of Macon that was an influence was Little Richard. Yeah. And uh, you couldn't help but do Tutti Frutti. Oh, sure. You know? <laughs> I knew all the words to Miss Ann and slip, uh, Slipping and Sliding. And sure. Long Tall Sally. That's and, my favorite. I oh, love that man, one. Oh, man. I, yeah. I got to tell you. And, and it, Richard was great and is still great. Mm -hmm. You know, 80 something years old. And uh, I'm happy to say he got his honorary uh, degree from Mercer not long ago. I didn't know that. And that was something that he really wanted. Uh, he had expressed that to me. And uh, Gary Montgomery had started it no, out Gary Welch, sure. about trying to get it for him and he kind of got stalled down. Well, I told Jessica about it, my daughter Jessica, yeah. and she went to work on it because uh, she works for Mercer mm -hmm. and um, she actually got it to go through. Well, that is awesome. Well, I'll tell you something. Once she makes up her mind, that's that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have to say, my daughter. Does she get that? From my daughter family? actually works harder than her daddy ever did. Oh. You know. <laughs> you know, I was known that's, in, this, in, know, the, this, in the old days. I was known to sleep on the sofa rather than go home <laughs> because I wanted to be there to open the office early the next day. <laughs> You know, bring, now, you know a, she's, bring an extra change of clothes. You know right she's going to see this, and so she'll be able to hold that over your head forever, right? Yeah. Okay, well, all right. right. Just making sure you're aware. But where <laughs> I, I, I have to say, we'll go somewhere where people used to say, hey, there's Alan Walden. They'll go, hey, there's Jessica Walden and her, and her daddy. <laughs> And I said, well, that's awesome. as long as it's my daughter, it's okay. That's you know? okay. That's exactly right. But you know, if you go back in the in the history of uh, Macon, you know, we've we've produced a lot of creative people. You're right. And and not only in music, but in writing, poetry, and and uh, 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 stories written here in Macon. Uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof was written right here in Macon mm -hmm. on uh, College Street. You know. Yeah. But, you know, you had Lena Horn actually lived in Macon for a while. I had no idea. Yeah. I wondered how and, we got her at the Binder and Pop Festival, and that, that, yeah. that explains that. Well, she, she uh, uh, spent some time here in Macon, and she, it wasn't a real pleasant experience for her. Oh, well, sorry to hear that. But, uh, you know, and then we had James Brown got his break here in, in uh, Macon with mm -hmm. a guy named Clint Brantley that owned a nightclub called The Two Spot. Mm -hmm. And Clint uh, used to book the auditorium shows, and yeah. so he and James worked together for a while. And he introduced James Brown to Ben Bart, who became James's lifetime manager. Gotcha. But uh, then, of course, we had my man, which was without a doubt uh, the king of soul music. Yeah, Otis Redding. Absolutely, and you were very instrumental in, in things that he did. Well, you know, I. Uh, I had to drop out of Mercer when my brother went in the army, mm -hmm. and uh, I was the last available male at home. So <laughs> I, I dropped out of college and went to work trying to run the agency. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a very strange uh, job for a young guy, 19 years old. You know, sure. uh, I had never worked with musicians, so I, you know, I had to learn the do's and don'ts in that area. Yeah. And I hadn't worked that much with African Americans, so right. I had to kind of learn that at the same time and try to break the racial barrier, you know? That, that's the exciting thing about music and, and Macon's music, especially with Otis Redding. You say you're from Macon, people aren't quite sure, then you say, oh, that's, you know, Otis Redding. Oh, now they know where you're from. Yeah. And that's why music to me is so amazing, because it has that power. Yeah. To communicate across all boundaries. Well, bear in mind, I was at the Apollo Theater, mm -hmm. and Otis said, uh, "Anybody else there from Macon, Georgia?" And it got booed. Wow. Okay. He goes, "Whoa, wait a minute now, <laughs> hold on." 
Now, you know, don't do that to my hometown. Don't do that. That's uh, Macon's really all right. So we don't we don't have any problems there. And then the next night he came out and said, anybody from Macon, Georgia, and everybody applauded. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me about your experience. And we're starting to run short on time for this segment, but tell me about your experience with uh, two of my other favorite groups uh, that you were very involved with, which was the Almond Brothers and then Wet Willie. Well, you know, they both actually were my brother's project, mm -hmm. but uh, I did work with uh, uh, him when the Almond Brothers cut the first two albums, mm -hmm. but I left uh, after uh, two albums. I got you. And uh, I don't believe what Willie had recorded yet. They uh, maybe they had recorded, but not been released yet. But. Uh, he and I, my brother and I, began to have disagreements about the direction we wanted to go the rest of our lives, and mm -hmm. we had, we had lost Otis, which was just to me that just buckled my knees. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, I just I couldn't believe that uh, he was gone. You know, it, it, Otis was not only my biggest singer; he was also my best friend in life. Yeah. Period. Yeah. When he moved around Oak, Georgia, I moved around Oak, Georgia. We had the first integrated staff in Macon, Georgia. We had the first integrated owned company in Macon, Georgia. And uh, I think we were way ahead of our time, period, you know. Uh, but when we first went into business, they said, oh, God, I can't believe these two white crackers are going to come in here and try <laughs> to manage uh, African American uh, bands. And uh, they predicted that we did, we did not stand a chance. Well, you did it. You did it successfully. And well, we're going to continue our conversation next week with Alan Walden right here on Studio 41.